I've been around this town a long time, 65 years. And I'm very proud Lexingtonian. I'm a very proud Kentuckian. Uh, I was blessed to be brought up in a town where you've heard the old saying where a neighborhood or a village raises the kids. That's my case because I grew up on the south side of town. My dad, Bobby Flynn, my mom, Richie Flynn, raised me on Halls Lane right off of Versailles Road 11 years. And because of that, I, I never remember not playing baseball. I've got pictures when I was a little kid in the backyard with a bat and a glove. And I remember going to uh, baseball tryouts as a youngster, and I don't remember a lot about it. I just remember that they said, you've been picked by the Lexington Colts in the Western Little League. Well, I knew the Colts had a reputation for being very good. And the year that I was eight years old was the last year that an eight-year-old could play Little League ball. So I was very lucky because the coaches of that team, Luther Wren, Gardner Smith, Jack Durkin, these guys knew baseball. And they looked to me like they were bigger in life. When you get to be 13, you have to move up a level to Pony League. Made the all-star team and got a chance to play with some wonderful ball players. Mike Belcher, to me, the best shortstop I was ever around. He was a shortstop on our high school team as well. And several of us that played up here on this all-star team went on to Bryan Station and played together. So, you know, Bryan Station, I, I couldn't have got there at a better time. Wonderful teachers, coaches. Uh, I played baseball and basketball because I'd always done that. I'd done that as a, all the way up the ladder as a kid. When I got to uh, football, I was a quarterback. Um, not very quick, not very strong, just loved the game. All right, here's the biggest mystery of all. How in the world did Doug Flynn get no scholarship offers and then start playing basketball at the University of Kentucky? They had an opening and it was late in the year and I wasn't, didn't know where I was gonna go to school. So they said, we'd like for you to play point guard on the basketball team. If that doesn't work out, we'll give you a baseball scholarship. And I thought, wow, so this, this is great. So, and I loved it. One of the best years of my life, being around Coach Hall and Coach Rupp, Dan Issel, Mike Pratt, Terry Mills, Mike Casey, all the great athletes there, and then wonderful guys on the baseball team. Uh, I didn't play a lot on the baseball team. I played every game on the basketball team as a starting guard, but I didn't play every game in baseball because we had some good players playing in front of me. And the time came where they had to make a decision if they were gonna give me a scholarship or not. Uh, they decided not, and I moved on to a junior college. While at the junior college in Somerset, Kentucky, some friends woke me up one morning and said, we're all gonna try out for the Cincinnati Reds. And so I signed my first contract for $2,500, gave me a right to be a Cincinnati Red, and I started my journey into the minor leagues and then on to the big red machine. I knew my place, I was a utility player. I wasn't gonna start, but I was gonna have to be ready and fill in every game if necessary. And the first year I got 128 at bats in 90 games. And then the next year I got 220 something at bats, which is quite a bit for a guy that doesn't play every day. And uh, we win a couple of world championships. The, the players treated me great then, they treat me great now. Matter of fact, I tease them. I say, you know, you all were really good in 70, but you got beat by Baltimore. And you all were really good in 72, but you got beat by Oakland. You were really good in 73, but the Mets beat you and you didn't even get out of the league. 74, you disappeared. I got here in 75, we won. I was here in 76, we won. You traded me in 77, you didn't win again. I think we see right now who the glue of the big red machine was. But the Reds decided that it was time to make a few moves. The biggest move that busted up our team was getting rid of Tony Perez. And they also traded me and Pat Zachary and several other people, Gary Nolan, Freddie Norman. A lot of us got sent out at that time. You busted up the chemistry of, you know, one of the greatest teams of all time. But what it did for me is it got me a chance to go to New York and become an everyday player. And I was very fortunate to lead the league in a couple of things, fielding several years. And uh, they rewarded me one year with a gold glove. You know, I love my stay in New York. I'll tell you, it's the only place to play. If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. I went from five reporters in the clubhouse to 50. Went from one guy asking me a question to 45 or 50. And it really shocked me when I got traded. Just signed a five-year deal with the Mets, so I thought, well, I'm here for the duration. But they got a new general manager who's cleaning house. They got rid of Joe Torre, got rid of Lee Mazzilli, got rid of me and several other people. And so I get a chance to go to Texas. Well, Texas was unloading, and they were trying to rebuild. I was only there four months. I get a knock on my door. says, you've been traded to Montreal Expos. And, and I love my time in Montreal. I got a great chance to play with some wonderful players. I was an everyday player for several years. And then they started unloading again and bringing up some young guys. And 
You know, I seem to happen to be in places that were doing that, but uh, I left Montreal and ended up my career in Detroit. Love Detroit. Uh, and then when collusion came, they cut the rosters down to 24. I was already 35 years of age. Uh, they were trying to save some money. I understand how that works. It's business. But you know, when you look back, I signed up a tryout camp for $2,500. I got cut from my college team, basically. Uh, I didn't make all city in any of the sports that I played. Didn't have any scholarship offers. And to say that you would play 11 years in the major leagues, you are looking at a blessed man. Because if anybody told me that all that would happen and what has happened since, I'd say you're crazy. And I got out of baseball in 1986. The Reds asked me to come to a baseball fantasy camp in 1987, and I've been doing them ever since. Now, I know I wasn't a marquee player, and I was only in Cincinnati two years, but Dick Williams, who's now the general manager, saw me at fantasy camp and started getting me back involved with Cincinnati. I run, facilitate the baseball fantasy camp for the Reds. We sell out every year, 144 guys, 12 teams, Sold out, Max, it is unbelievable. But they also asked me to start doing other things, like emceeing some banquets. Then I got invited to do some broadcasting. So thanks to Marty, I now have a chance to do 15, 20 games a year. But I love the fact that it keeps me in the game, keeps me around it. I don't want people to say, yeah, he was a pro ball player and that's all they remember. I would like to think that I would have been the same person had I not been a pro ball player. But each and every one of us is given a platform to take advantage of. You know, some guys are very good at speaking in public. Some guys are very good at putting it down on paper and let others read it. Uh, some people are very good at uh, uh, talking about a ball game, and other guys are very good at playing that game. I just think when you're given an opportunity that you can use to help other people, then you need to take advantage of it. That's what baseball's done for me. It's given me that platform so that I can share it and then hopefully help others as they're going along the way. Hard to believe. It's been 52 years since I've been back to this ball field. This very ball field where as a 13 and 14 year old, I started maturing and learning how to play the game. And when I look around this field, not a lot has changed here at Castlewood Park. The only thing that's aged, right here.